Previously on the Stolen Slushy Machine Saga. Oh, I don't want to go to jail. Listen, none of us are going to jail. They don't have our fingerprints, and we're not going to get caught if we all just deny everything. So just all of you keep your fucking mouth shut, and this will all blow over. Well, it was pretty damn clear at that point that one of us had spilled the beans. The gig was up. And yet here we were on our way to get a first-hand indoctrination. For the four of us, shit was getting real. After arriving at the juvenile detention center, the four of us were sent through processing where we would once again have our mugshots taken. I was first led into an office of the jail psychologist for my pre-incarceration psych evaluation. I was asked questions like, Do you have violent tendencies towards others? No. Do you have violent tendencies towards yourself? Nah. Do you ever hear voices in your head? Yes, the voice in my head said. Uh, no, no. All clear, the psychologist told the guard. And so I was brought into stage two of processing. Now it might not come as a surprise, but detention centers have a very rigorous security protocol to prevent inmates from smuggling in weapons or other contraband into the secured areas. And I was about to find out firsthand just how thorough that process was, as an enormous heavy set prison guard led me into a vacant shower room. With the two of us alone in the room, he began giving me orders. Take off your shoes. Yes, sir. Easy enough. Now open up your mouth wide and lift up your tongue. He proceeded to check my mouth with a small flashlight to see if I had any razor blades hidden in my gums. Now ruffle your hair. Yes, sir. You know, in case I had a gun hidden in my hair, I assume. Turn around and face the wall. Yes, sir. Now drop your pants and underwear down to your ankles and bend over. Oh fuck, this was it. I knew I shouldn't have stolen that slushy machine. So long, anal virginity. It was nice knowing you. With both hands, spread your ass cheeks and cough three times. Sweet Jesus, he was just checking to see if I had anything hidden up my ass that would plop out when I coughed. It didn't occur to me until much later how much this guy must have either hated or really loved his job. This is a man who was about 32 years old or so, probably has a home and family he's got to provide for, and so took up a job at the local juvie center to make a living, only to find out that one of his regular duties would be staring into underage boys' assholes all day and ordering them to loosen their sphincter. Who knows, maybe he fucking loves this type of work. But judging by his bored and nonchalant tone of voice when he said, spread your ass cheeks, I would assume that he dreads waking up every morning. Either way, it was an incredible uncomfortable moment in my life, which is why I'm sharing it with everyone on the internet. After I was allowed to stop exposing my poop hole, the guard gave me a set of prison attire, ordered me to remove all my clothes, which he took, and then ordered me to take a shower and change into the prison uniform. Luckily for me, he left the room as I showered myself in the freezing water trickling out of the faucet. When I was fully dressed in my new digs, I was marched through the long and winding hallways that led to the cell block I'd soon be calling home. I'm not gonna lie and say I wasn't growing more and more anxious every step. I was about to be thrown into a pit of hardened juvenile criminals who were all currently spending their recreation time in the common room. The fear must have shown on my face when the cell block entrance guard asked, First time? Yes, sir. Scared? No, sir. Fresh fish, he said as he pushed me into the cell block rec room and slammed the heavy bolted door behind me. Have you ever gone to a new school and during lunch had to take a minute awkwardly holding your food tray as you scan the lunchroom for a place to sit? Looking over each table and trying to see how the occupants might react if a newcomer were to sit with them uninvited. You know, the classic high school movie cliché. Well, this moment was kind of like that, except instead of having to decide whether to sit at the cool kids table or with the geeks, I had to figure out which table I could sit at without getting stabbed in the neck with a pencil. All right, maybe not that dramatic. Now, Roger and Teeny must have still been in processing, but I saw that Elliot was already in the rec room and sitting with a group, and there was an empty seat at the table next to his. So I slunk over and took it, joining three other inmates as they stared me down. These fellas looked like they had been in and out of jail for years, rugged and worn, with facial scarring indicative of many past fights. And then, of course, me, a fresh-faced 90-pound weakling who had yet to show any trace of facial hair. Two of my new table mates simply went back to the conversation they were having, disinterested in my presence at all. But one of them just kept staring at me. And then I realized that I recognized him. You skateboard, right? He said to me. Yeah. 
don't you as well? It turned out that this inmate's name was Angel, and that we had a mutual friend who went to our high school. Apparently, we had all gone skateboarding in big groups a few times in the past. Cool, man. So what are you in for? We robbed a gas station. Elliot chimed in from the table next to us, winking at me candidly. No way. That's badass. Angel said. How did you get caught? Uh, I, uh, we... The cops busted us right as we were about to make our getaway with a ton of stolen beer and cigarettes. Uh, yeah, that's what happened. It was crazy. Hey Rusty, this guy wants you to design him a tattoo. I told him you can draw. Elliot gestured to an inmate next to him. Yeah, I can draw, I said. Can you draw me a Jeff tattoo? A what? A Jeff to, a Jeff to tattoo. I couldn't understand a word he was saying. This was a thing about Juvie. Everyone spoke with such a strong, unintelligible street vernacular that my lily white ears just couldn't keep up. A Jeff to, a jester. Elliot clarified. Oh, a jester. Yeah, I can do that. This was going great. I was only 10 minutes in the juvie and was already making friends and drawing jailhouse tattoos. Maybe if we got sentenced to a few months here, it wouldn't be so bad after all. So I started drawing a picture of a jester with a pencil that I took from the rec room's bookshelf. But unfortunately for my new friend, one of the guards instantly came over and snatched the pencil and paper away from me. Fresh fish don't get pencil privileges. Apparently. But no matter anyways, because recreation time was about to end. Just as Roger and Teeny entered the rec room, it was already time for us to go to our individual cells for the night. Us four new inmates were given a blanket, a pillow, and a ridiculously thin rolled up mattress, and all the inmates were ordered into a single file line and marched down the cell hallway. As each inmate stood in front of our designated cell, it became clear that there just wasn't enough cells for everyone, which meant that there was no room for Teeny, and he would have to sleep in the hallway for the night. As for the rest of us, the guards came down the hall and unlocked each of our doors, relocking them once we were inside. And so here I was, in a teeny white-walled cell, nothing but a stone platform to make my bed on, a small sink, and a metal toilet with no toilet paper. I wouldn't need any anyways because none of us had eaten for hours. I unrolled the stiff mattress they had given me and sat in my new bed, pondering the poor decisions that had got me here. This could very well be my room for months to come. If that were the case, I would surely be driven insane by the bare bleakness of my new reality. But I couldn't know my fate until the next morning, when we had our first appearance in court, where the judge would decide whether we stayed in juvie or not. And with all these anxious thoughts swimming around in my head, I tried to sleep, failing at first, but eventually slipping away into unconsciousness. The next thing I remember was hearing the guards coming down the hallway, yelling to announce that it was morning and that we would be eating breakfast in 15 minutes. All of the inmates were brought out of our cells and walked in a single file line to the cafeteria, where we were given lunch trays carrying our breakfast, boxed orange juice, an apple, and a bologna sandwich. Oh, this was fine dining for sure. Really feasting like kings we were. I sat down at a table and ate greedily to satisfy my starving stomach. Once breakfast was over, we went back to our cells and I awaited the guards to come to take me to the courthouse. When they finally came, Elliot, Roger, Teeny, and myself were once again put in full body shackles before riding in the prisoner transport van to meet our fate in court. None of us looked like we had slept well. And despite me and Elliot trying to continue our cheerful attitudes, Teeny and Roger were clearly in a state of morose. I won't bore you with the details of the trial. It was just a lot of sitting around in the courtroom with several other juvies waiting for the judge to call our names and receive our sentence. When the judge finally called on the four of us to stand, we all prepared ourselves for the worst. The judge read through our crimes, grand theft, criminal mischief, destruction of public property, and probably a few more that I forgot. Each of these crimes carry a certain number value, and if that total value exceeds a certain limit, then you would be sentenced to return to juvie. But you are all just one point away from reaching that total value. So instead, I'm sentencing you to be placed on house arrest until the full duration of your future trials come to an end. You got lucky. Hooah! I yelled in celebration. We had narrowly escaped months in juvie by a single crime point thing. And while house arrest surely didn't sound like much fun, it would be a hell of a lot better than eating bologna sandwiches every day for breakfast. 
So we were all released from the detention center and into the custody of our parents. The first trial was over, but we still had three more trials before our final hearing and sentencing, meaning that we would be on house arrest for the next six to seven months. Since we were minors, house arrest meant that our parents had to maintain that we only left the house if we were going to school, going to work, or were under their supervision. So I didn't get an ankle bracelet or anything, but I sure was strictly chained to my home a 16 year old kid in the prime of my teenage years watching as all my peers went to parties or elsewhere to have fun as i sat in my room doing nothing bored out of my fucking mind waiting for my final court date to arrive and end of my suffering well now i'm no hippie so i'm not gonna say some dumb shit like from every bad thing comes something good but that's kind of what happened to me in the period that I was on house arrest, I had to find something to entertain myself and get me through the boredom. So I started learning how to play guitar, and eventually got the hang of it enough to begin writing my own songs and lyrics. I don't think that I ever would have even started writing music at all if I wasn't forced to do it, out of having nothing else to do. So I look back on those 7 months of house arrest with a fondness. Getting arrested for stealing that slushy machine was the best thing that ever happened to me because music is what got me through those long months leading up to my last court date. And when our final sentencing was given, all four of us were sentenced to pay $2,000 in restitution charges for the damages we had caused and many hours of community service. In my opinion, we got off light, considering what we could have gotten. And as Elliot, Roger, Teeny, and myself walked along the highways picking up trash and serving our community service hours, we all had to laugh at the ridiculousness of what we had done. Stole a fucking slushy machine. What a bunch of dumbasses. That concludes the saga of the stolen slushy machine. I hope you all enjoyed it. Special thank you to everyone who supports this channel on Patreon. Be sure to follow me on Twitter to get all the updates on new videos and projects. Thank you all for watching, and stay tuned. Oh, when I step up to the place, you know I step correct. Ooh, got you all in check. I got that head not shit to make you break your neck. Ooh, got you all in check. And you know we come through the work to disco tech. Ooh, got you all in check. So throw your hands up in the air, never disrespect. Ooh, got you all.